Hello all you shining stars, welcome to my channel Shining Star Soup. In today's What's the Soup Saturday, I'm going to be talking about my my biggest disappointments. As in products that are hyped up, that got me really excited to want to try them. You know, the, the reviews were awesome, you hear so much about these products, and um, some of them are not... Actually, most of them are really not cheap, especially the ones that I'm going to mention in this video. Uh, keep in mind, this is just my personal opinion. The, this is just things that I've been most disappointed in. Um, again, do I regret buying these things? Yes and no. Um, yes, because obviously they turned out to be a disappointment. And no, because I wouldn't know unless I had actually for myself, if I had actually went out and bought these things and tried these things, I wouldn't know that they were going to be such a big disappointment for me. Um, one thing is, I have um, a couple of uh, other videos I'm going to be doing, uh, my holy grails, uh, ones that, you know, I, I recommend. Um, I'm going to be doing a couple story times as well. But today's uh, video, we are focusing on the disappointments. Uh, the one thing about reviews is that it's, people seem to jump on the bandwagons. Like, if there is an overly hyped product, if, um, you know, some people... If you read some reviews on Sephora, uh, Sephora especially is kind of known for this. Uh, a lot of a product may have, like, 4.5 out of 5 stars. But if you look at their reviews, about 80% of them are people who got free products for review. Now there are some um, influencers and reviewers out there who are honest, but a lot of thing, a lot of worry, and even in the back of my mind, even though I do um, be, I, I am very honest with my reviews. When you're like a lower subscribers, you know you have lower subscribers, you're not as well known. Um, it's your first product that you got gifted free for review. Um, sometimes that can um, lean you towards maybe being a little bit more lenient on the reviews. Uh, just because in the back of my, in your mind you're worried that, hey, you know, if I don't give this a glowing review, maybe they won't, well, maybe they won't, you know, keep on sending me stuff. And that does happen with some brands. And companies so the only way to really know like if a product's gonna work for you is to try it yourself and when you get little samples sometimes those samples are not going to show you how um, a product is going to perform for you in the long term so the products that I'm listing here and I'm gonna be doing quick reviews on them um, me personally my review is a um, hundred percent honest you know I'm, I'm reviewing this way after the fact these products that I'm going to be talking about I've received none of them free for review this is all these are all products that I have gotten with my own my own money the first product I want to talk about uh, was a big disappointment for me and I and have been giving this one a fair shot I do have a bit of shine and oil as you can see um, the Tatcha Silk, but I've already done my face, <laughs> so I'm not going to actually put it on. The Tatcha Liquid Silk Canvas. I decided to give this one a shot, um, just because, like, the, the other, like, the regular silk canvas, I did experience, uh, a little bit of pilling, depending on, on what moisturizer I used. Uh, I always had the little one, the little sample. Uh, I never splurged to get the big one. I do remember that the first time I tried the silk canvas, I was blown away. But um, Elf, as people have said, is a good dupe. A very much, very, very cheaper dupe. Uh, I was so sad that I wasn't as impressed. This is $68 Canadian, and that's not cheap. Um... I also noticed that I am going through this quite quickly, even though I, I haven't been using it every day. 
Uh, I've been mostly wanting to find, uh, and I'm still searching for my holy grail of moisturizer or primer that'll help with my shininess throughout the day. I've recently just got into skincare in a big way. I would, I was big in on, I, I go through phases. I was big into subscription boxes in 2019, big into makeup in 2020, 2021 I'm big into, um, and you're seeing this video, 2022, big into skincare and just, um, I, I, I know that skincare works uh, because in my early 20s I wasn't into skincare at all. I washed my face, that's all I did. I didn't, you know, do moisturizer, I didn't do toner, I did none of that stuff, and my, my skin, and the condition of it, and um, just the feel and the texture has improved in my 40s. Yeah, I'm 40 now, yay! <laughs> the big 4-0! Man, how time flies. I feel that my, my skin is in much better condition than it was back when I didn't have any skincare regime at all uh, instead of just washing my face. So this one was a disappointment uh, because I found it, it did not do what I wanted it to do. It didn't really make any difference when it came to being shiny throughout the day. Um, I didn't notice any added longevity of the makeup and the foundation that I use. I have been wearing makeup a lot less. I, I wear makeup, I went from daily to like maybe once a week, maybe once every two weeks, depending on how I'm feeling that week. So that's why I've been more focused on skincare. Uh, yeah, is it worth the money to me? No. I would stick to, and I will be repurchasing the regular silk canvas. I mean, people talk about a smell and a fragrance uh, with Tatcha. I, I don't smell it. Maybe I don't have that sensitive of a nose. Uh, I mean, I, I'm still in the search for, right now, for my Holy Grail, Grail Primer. I haven't tried Silk Canvas in a long time, and I wanted to give the big guy a shot. So, the Tatcha Silk Canvas, disappointed. If I had to rate it out of five stars, I would give it a two out of five. I mean, we can change our mind about skincare, right? <laughs> Just throwing that out there. Uh, the next product I'm going to talk about is one that's been hyped up a lot. And I just, it's not really my, my, my favorite. And that is, and I'm going to butcher this, Lanaji, the, the lip sleeping, sleeping mask. These ones seem to be a uh, cult favorite. I picked this one up at Winners. I think it was 17 bucks when you can buy this on Sephora for 27. Uh, I sometimes wonder if the products at Winners are maybe they're there because they are expiring soon. I, I don't know the gist. The one thing I did not like about the sleeping mask is it's it's very goopy. Um, I don't know what I was expecting. Uh, but the biggest thing is I didn't really notice a difference in, in the morning after using the sleeping masks. I think they're cute. Uh, I don't have a little spatula. I just use my fingers for it. Uh, there's a ton of, like, there's like six different flavors or whatever. I do not taste anything. I cannot taste this on my lips. It, it just feels like a sticky... Um, gloss that doesn't really do a thing for me. So I'm still searching for my holy grail of lip products, uh, overnight products. So that was another one that, that was a disappointment for me. Oh, another disappointment. In the search for my holy grail moisturizer, haven't found it yet. Um, yeah, oily skin, shine, yeah. This product seemed perfect for me because it advertised uh, two things that I was looking for in a moisturizer. 24 hour hydration and shine control. Al Kiehl's Ultra Facial Oil Free Gel Cream for normal to oily skin. This one. Uh, I think this was about 36, maybe $40 for this, uh, this 50 mil. 
Uh, after using it, I don't like it. I, I find that it doesn't help with my shine. It doesn't help with my oil control at all. And I don't like the consistency. I don't like gel. I don't feel like it's being absorbed into my face. So this, and, and I have a lot left. Uh, this is definitely, I'm filming this in August, so I don't know, maybe I will append this by, by January when you're seeing this. But again, disappointing product for me. Still in the search for my, my holy grail when it comes to uh, moisturizers that'll help with the shine. One product, I, I have been searching for this palette for, for a long time. I, I kind of held off on it. The Huda Beauty Emerald Obsessions was another one that I was just like... The reviews on the the nine pans like this for the Huda Beauty are give or take, you know. I was really attracted to that turquoise, that, uh, I don't know if you want to call it turquoise, the turquoise color. Um, I'm just not happy with the way this one performs. Uh, another disappointment, a little bit of fallout. It didn't blend as easily as I thought. Um, yeah, I, I wanted this palette forever, the green, and it just, just kind of disappointed me. Oh, Sonia G. Sonia G, uh, I can order these brushes from Sephora. The only place I can order is Sonia G is through Beautylish. This one had really good reviews, this brush right here. Um, it, it's frayed a little, but that's my own fault. I haven't been taking uh, care of it uh, as, much as, I, as much as I could. This one is a natural goat hair, I think it is. I could be wrong. These ones aren't cheap. Uh, like they aren't cheap at all. I think like $50 range Canadian after conversion, everything's all done. Uh, but the reviews are really good. And Sonia G seemed like uh, a really good brand. Uh, Worker Pro. This one is the Worker Pro. I don't like it. I, I've been, I've had it for about over a year and I just, I don't know. To me, it doesn't, it's not a pro for me. Um, it doesn't work to... There's just something off, but I don't like it. I don't like its performance. I would, it, it steered me away from Sonia G, this Worker Pro, especially because I was expecting a lot from it. One of my most expensive disappointments is the Pat McGrath Divine Rose 2 palette. And I'm Mothership palette. This one, again, $170. This why I didn't get it on sale. I, 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 I was attracted to the pink case. I was attracted to limited edition only to find out it's not limited edition. I would like to get my hands on a regular Divine Rose pink case, but that might not happen. Um, yeah, you know, I was attracted to the thought of the, the trichome and the sparkles. It's just this palette is missing something for me. I don't reach for it. I only reach for it because I know how expensive it is. That's why I reach for it. That's why I want to use it. It's like, hey, I paid almost 200 bucks for this palette. I, I want to use it. Uh, but the Divine Rose 2, I mean, we only have the, the, two, the two matte shades. And it, it's hard to create different looks for me with this, uh, with this particular palette. So big disappointment for me. And my biggest disappointment, actually my biggest disappointment was the Tatcha Silk Primer. I bought this for nostalgia. There's one thing I've learned when it comes to Morphe products is that Morphe doesn't hold itself to the quality. Oh, there is actually another product that I'm staring at that I forgot I didn't mention. I'm gonna have a sip of my coffee. I wanted this to this this one palette to work so so badly, cause it's so adorable. You ever had Lisa Frank folders when you when you were young? I mean, Lisa Frank was like the 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 rage when I was in school, especially around uh, junior high. Junior high was big rage. Anyway, I have barely touched this, and the, the colors. There's there's so many colors. This has to be the most, one of the most unpigmented fallout uh, palettes I've, I've ever had. I could not make any, any shades in this work. So 
basically this has been, just been sitting in my vanity. I, I dived into a couple colors, but we're talking, we're talking Fallout, we're talking, no, like, you can swatch this and the colors are, are all right. Um, but it's just powdery. It, they there's no lasting power even with uh, eyeshadow primer. Uh, it was you know it wasn't expensive. I think it was forty bucks. So I mean that could be considered expensive. So this has become my. It's very pretty. It's pretty to look at. But um, functionality as far as using it, big disappointment for the Morphe uh, Lisa Frank palettes. And I haven't really had it. the. Original Jaclyn Hill palette, um, before they changed the formula and the packaging, was, was decent. Morphe products, though, I'm, I'm not really a big fan when it comes to Morphe. Price point-wise, yeah. One thing I wanted to talk about really quick, um, another disappointment for me, is Jeffrey Star lip products. At least uh, the ones that I've tried. Um, their lip scrubs to me have been disappointing. His uh, lipsticks, I I just I don't know what it is. Um, this sh this Shane Dawson one I got this in uh, a mystery bundle, summer mystery bundle through Beautylish. Uh, I don't really understand the hype of the lip products. I I don't think personally that they they look really good. I don't like the texture of them. So, I mean, the lip products from Jeffree Star, for me, at least the liquid lips, have been um, a dis disappointment. Alright, so this is going to wrap up my What's the Soup Saturday, uh, the disappointments, especially the ones I'm, I'm most disappointed about would be the Tatcha and Pat McGrath, just because there's so much money, and this little hyped up product. These are ones that I would definitely not repurchase and kind of regret purchasing. So I'm going to wrap up this What's the Soup Saturday. Uh, thanks for watching. Feel free to leave some comments down below. Opinions, whatever. I'm, I'm game. Alright, all you shining stars, have a shining star day. And keep being shining stars, even if I'm not around this often to remind you. Bye, guys.